Most of us explain to students that transitions connect or link paragraphs. Then we typically introduce first, next, then last. And all is well when students are describing an event, retelling a story, or explaining a life cycle. But everything they write isn't going to be in a chronological text structure. Eventually, they will compare and contrast ideas, or write about the multiple facets of a bigger topic, or state an opinion, followed by their supporting reasons. And each of these types of writings must also have transitions that connect their ideas. But the connections are no longer sequential. Therefore, first, next, then last will no longer suffice. We need to deepen students' understanding of transitions. They do more than just connect paragraphs. They have a much bigger function within a paragraph. They define how individual sentences are connected, how those ideas are related. Transitions are like road signs. They tell the reader how this sentence is related to the previous sentence. They alert the reader to how the ideas are connected. Once we've shared this, then we want to provide students a list of transition words, but we must organize it by relationship. These transitions show relationship. They're organized by category. If the next sentence was an example or illustration of the previous sentence, then choose one of these. If the next sentence has similar information, then choose one of these. If the sentence restates or says it again another way, use one of these. Students are attempting to create organization, a logical flow of their ideas. So they have to consider, how does this idea relate to the previous one? And then choose the appropriate transition. But as we know, simply providing students such a list isn't going to be enough. We have to model how do you choose which category should be used? That's when you provide some example sentences and let kids listen to you rationalize your choices. Here's one way to try this. Provide two sentences that are related, but leave out the transition. Read them aloud and let students listen to your thinking. Sam was on edge and didn't want to sit down. The next sentence is, Joseph stood with his hands tucked in his pockets, waiting. Okay, so I'm envisioning Sam is fidgeting, he's moving around, he must be nervous about something. And then Joseph, somebody else, is standing still, waiting, kind of like, who cares, being patient. Okay, that, those are very different. They are, they are different from one another. Now I look at my sheet and I think, well, they're contrasting, so I should choose one of those examples. So now I could choose, on the other hand, Joseph stood with his hands tucked in his pockets waiting because these are contrasting details. Let's try the second one. German shepherds can be good watchdogs. All right, so that's a fact. Now let's read the next sentence. If you want to keep your home safe, a German shepherd is a good breed to consider. All right, so watchdogs, this is more about watchdogs. This is how to keep your home safe because of a watchdog. All right, I'm looking at the list and I don't know, it's not different. It's, it's, it's basically saying the same thing again. It's like a restatement. I'm thinking in other words, German shepherds can be good watchdogs. In other words, if you want to keep your home safe, a German Shepherd is a good breed to consider. The key to transitions is thinking aloud. How are the two sentences connected? How are they related? That's what the students really need help with. And you definitely don't want to imply there's only one right answer. Because depending on where you're going with the sentiment, there's a couple different options. Let's look at this third example. Babe Ruth was a great baseball player who excelled at both pitching and batting. Okay, so it's all about Babe Ruth, and he's a good pitcher and a good batter. All right, next sentence. He was remembered for his ability to slug big home runs out of the ballpark. Okay, well, that's about batting because, you know, it's hitting and it's batting, and 
So you told me about pitching and batting, and then you told me like this extra something about the batting. Extra something, extra emphasis. So I'm thinking I should choose one of those. Like above all, I could say above all, he was remembered for his ability to slug big home runs out of the park. Or, or there's not one answer here. Maybe I don't do above all, and I say he was remembered especially for his ability to slug big home runs out of the ballpark. Plan to model multiple variations for the same connection. Again, you don't want students to think there's one right answer. In fact, after giving students some experience and opportunity to watch you, involve them in the thinking and choosing of which ones seem most appropriate. Transitions are essential to strong organization. They are what writers use to create or achieve a logical flow of ideas. But be sure not to limit use of transitions to just connecting big chunks or sections of a paper. We want students to understand that transitions relate individual ideas within each of those paragraphs.